The answer to that question, does that mulch have weeds? Are there weeds in that mulch? Yes, there are. And it's not a big problem. I mean, I have a 2,500 square foot garden here. If the weed seeds that are in the mulches that I use were a, a real problem, a time consuming problem, uh, I just couldn't manage it. I mean, Does that mulch have weeds? Are there weed seeds in that mulch? Uh, I have to say as a no-till, Ruth Stout, permaculture, back to Eden, whatever you want to call it, type gardener, a gardener who has all his beds covered in mulch all the time, number one question I tend to get uh, asked when I'm throwing yard waste on a garden bed, because most of the mulch I use is basically yard waste that someone has bagged up and left at the end of their driveway. I'm a scavenger. It's just the easiest way to get it. It's so much easier than gathering it myself. Someone else gathers it, they put it in a nice bag for me, I stick it in the trunk of my car, throw it in my garden bed, and I have no idea what's in there. The answer to that question, does that mulch have weeds? Are there weeds in that mulch? Yes, there are. And it's not a big problem. I mean, I have a 2,500 square foot garden here. I, got, I don't know how many garden beds I have. Let's say let's say 40 4 by 8 beds, somewhere between 40 and 54 by 8 beds, equivalent, it doesn't all work out that way here. So it's a sizable garden and uh, you know if, if the weed seeds that are in the mulches that I use were a, a real problem, a time consuming problem, uh, I just couldn't manage it. I mean I, I basically do all this myself. I've got two young kids but they're sort of at that age where you know, uh, yeah, it's hard to motivate them. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, it would be great if they did more, but uh, anyway, I, I don't want them to have negative experiences of being in the garden, so I, I try to encourage them. I try to ask them for help. And, uh, and anyway, this isn't a parenting website, so a diatribe on that. But anyway, um, if it was a real problem, staying on top of the weeds that the weed seeds in my mulch cause in my garden. I just couldn't do this on the scale I'm doing it on. I got a full, I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm a full, I have a full-time job. You know, I work in an office in a cubicle, right? Uh, so I have a full-time job and there's no way I could stay on top of this if that were not the case. Sure, this year's different, it's COVID-19 and I'm lucky enough to have the kind of job where I can work from home. But most years I don't, and my garden's really not any bigger this year than it was last year, right? I have an hour commute. I basically spend two hours on the road every day. I got a full-time job, and I manage this garden, and I could not do that if there was just weeds everywhere, and it was an incredible problem. Um, you know, some that basically, if you keep the mulch on thick, two to three inches thick, uh, the majority, not all, but the majority of the weed seeds that are in that mulch. Um, either will not germinate or they germinate and can't push through the mulch and they just die and become fertilizer, right? So for the most part, it's not a problem. Some of them do, there's some, some kinds of weeds can find their way through. Um, let's say, um, if I were to list the main weeds I have in my garden, um, and a good number of them are edible. So uh, let me list the inedible ones first. They're ones I don't eat. So I get sorrel, which is edible, but I don't, I don't really, uh, you know, bother with it. Um, um, like here's some right here. All right, so that's sorrel and uh, the stems aren't really much to write home about. So you, you basically, I mean you can eat it but you have to pick off each one of these. All right, it has a sort of nice lemony flavor. Um, you wouldn't want to, you'd add it to a, you'd add some of these to a salad, you know. But yeah, I wouldn't want to have to live off of these. Anyway, I find them a ha um, uh, I find them a hassle to process. If I'm making a pasta dish, I might grab a bunch like this, rip them off like that, and throw them in. Sure, you can do that. Um, but anyway, I'm listing that among the inedible ones because I don't really eat them in any meaningful way. Um, I get different kinds of grass, of course. I get clover. I get uh, oh, uh, vetch, which is a real pain. Uh, but not everywhere, but I do get vetch. So sorrel and vetch are basically the most common thing. Sorrel, vetch, and grass I see <laughs> more. Um, but I also get thistle 
Uh, I, I, just about any weed you can imagine I get in my garden. I also have weird kinds of weeds like uh, well, things I don't even know what they're called. Uh, I also get blackberries and raspberries growing in here. I get uh, roses growing in here. Just about everything you can imagine. This year, one of my, one of my beds, I probably had about 300 oak trees growing in that bed. Uh, since I don't want to grow 300 oak trees in a uh, <laughs> one cubic meter space, that was a weed. Um, I also get weeds that are kind of pleasant, like this one here. Uh, this is, um, what's it called, lamb's quarters. <clears throat> now, you know, I, I, I pick it, but I tend to wait till it's about this size to pick it because um, it's got a tender stem and the whole thing is edible and it kind of has a spinach-like taste. Um, and you can eat it raw. Um, but it's got a kind of powder on it and uh, I don't know, I don't mind it. My, my, my nine-year-old daughter will eat it, just pick it out of the garden and eat it. Eat it. It, um, it's actually, it's very much like spinach, only I would say it's even milder than spinach. When you're eating spinach, you get a sensation of the oxalic acid, slight burning sensation. When you're eating spinach, you don't get it with this. It's very mild. Um, so um, anyway, I have this in the garden. Um, a lot of the weeds I have in my garden are not from using yard waste, but they're from gathering seaweed on the shore. Uh, where I live, Nova Scotia, you go down to the shoreline. I was just fishing on an island uh, a couple weeks ago. There's a little island you can take a boat to and fish flounder there. And I was just taking a walk along the shoreline looking for some sticks to make a sort of sun shelter. And I found uh, lamb's quarters. Uh, I think I found three different kinds of, um, what's it called, uh, curly dock, which I have in my garden as well. Um, and uh, you know, some other thing. I, I've even seen... Um, I've even seen tomatoes growing on the shores of beaches sometimes. Um, anyway, so these, this uh, lamb's quarters wasn't brought in from using people's yard waste. It was brought, brought in from using seaweed from the shore. Um, and it's funny, a lot of the uh, wild weeds you see growing on the seashore are edible. It's kind of, not all of them, of course. Some of them might make you sick, I don't know, but that's a good one. And this was everywhere on the island I was on. I mean, you basically could have lived there almost indefinitely. There was so much. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, curly docks, another one I have, it's kind of like a thick leafy green kale-like, I guess, in a sense, you can use that. Um, but yeah, I've got weeds in my garden, and uh, as long as you keep the mulch on reasonably thick, it's not a problem. Uh, let me show you a bed that I mulched last fall and really haven't done anything with, this. so I'm going to take you to a bed that I covered in yard waste. I planted garlic in the bed, and I covered it with about three inches of yard waste, and I haven't done a thing in that bed since last November. And it's, what is it now, July. All right, so here, yeah, here's a bed where, how much, so see, this would have been three inches, maybe even four inches thick, the mulch, um, last November when I planted these nice big fat garlic in here. And now the mulch is probably only about an inch high. And when it's an inch high, that's when the weeds start showing up, right? So I've got this uh, vetch, which is a really lousy, I, mean, it's, I think it's nitrogen fixing, so it's good in that sense, but it's a very, you know, sort of, um, resilient, insidious uh, weed with <coughs> uh, a pretty uh, aggressive rhizome. It grows underground and pops up in other places. Um, so uh, I think just while I'm talking you through this, I'm going to weed this bed. So all I do is I just, it doesn't take long. That's the other thing, right? So uh, I'm just pulling these out and leaving them on top of the, on top of the soil as I go, right? I'm just turning these weeds back, back into the mulch. <laughs> Right? You basically just pull it out, expose the roots, and lay it back down. That's all you got to do. It doesn't need to take long. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, sure, it's not my favorite thing to do. Um, but it's, it's not an onerous chore to do. And I mean, even if you're not mulching, you've gonna, you're going to have weeds in your garden. I mean, you know, I mean, there are techniques you can use with uh, composting to kill all the... Uh, basically with heat to kill all the weed seeds, to kill the viability of the weed seeds that are in various different mulches. But that's, that's also a chore in another way, because you gotta, you know, have the facility, you gotta move the material around, you gotta be, you know, sort of bringing about the right uh, conditions in the compost bin for that to happen. And there's elements of that as well. Whereas with this, I, I haven't done a thing, I haven't done anything in this garden since November. Um, and uh, this is the only work I'm going to do in it this year in terms of maintaining it. 
Uh, I tend to let the weeds grow a bit because they're easier to pull when they're bigger. Uh, for these plants in this particular situation, they're really not out competing anything. The garlic, the garlic grow big and fast and get high. The garlic are above them, so they're basically out competing everything for their, there's no shortage of light. And there's really not enough weeds uh, in this bed uh, where to allow one to make the argument that the weeds are competing for the nutrients in the soil. They're really not. Um, now here's a weird weed right here. There's actually a kale growing here, which uh, I don't know why, but I, kale just pops up in different parts of my garden. It's like the universe just knows I like kale, so it just gives me kale, um, which is nice. But uh, I'm going to let that kale just go about its business. Yeah, so there's that. There's that bed. Uh, you can still see the weeds in there, but I've weeded that bed. While I'm talking, I'll just get these little bit of little bit of weeds growing here in the walking path as well. You just throw them right on the bed. Basically, the weed's trying to say, "Hey, I'm a weed," and you're saying back to the weed, "No, you're mulch. <laughs> know your role, weed. You're mulch." You might have thought you were a weed for a fleeting moment, but you're mulch. There. Order returned. <laughs> so yeah, is it a big chore to deal with, um, you know, the few weeds that, you know, bringing in uh, weed-laced various four sources of mulch? Is it a big chore? No. The, the fact that I can get the mulch for free the fact that I don't have to go out of my way to get it, I'm just getting it on my way to and from work. Basically, if I ever see a bag, a brown bag at the end of someone's driveway, I pull over, have a peek in it. If it looks like good stuff, I throw it in the trunk and take it home, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's not a chore. Um, the benefits of it far outweigh the, uh, you know, what did that take? A couple minutes, right? Uh, the benefits of having that mulch on your soil far away any sort of drawback because I don't have to water this, I don't have to fertilize it, I don't have to till it, I don't have to do anything. Um, so there's just no real uh, downside and I don't have to be like putting it in a compost skin and getting my carbon nitrogen ratio and turning it and getting the heat. To, I don't have to fray around with that, I just throw it on there and leave it. And it all just sorts itself out over time and it works and it maintains the moisture level in my soil so I don't have to be out here watering. Usually from about this point onward, the hottest part of the summer, July, you know, wait for a really good rain, get a really good mulch on every single bed. I don't water all summer long. Um, and that, you, you know, we can go weeks without rain here. So, uh, you know, the benefits far outweigh um, uh, any sort of drawback that might go with that. From, from, from my point of view, anyway, the way I like to garden. And as I said, given the scope and scale that I'm gardening on, garden this large, um, if it was a problem, I just couldn't keep up with it. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. <laughs>